hiding something within your body. And so I swallowed it, hoping I'd catch it. It would catch in my bowels. I can make someone remove it when I need to. Oh. Well, I know where I can do that. Because there's a woman... Uh, I tried her once. That woman that actually... Down where Farad was, that was... She could search inside your body. I think it's Marta, right? Well, I, I, I know what I... We are going to do that immediately. <laughs> I want... I really wanted to find a, a use for her. I knew when I tried her that maybe there was something we needed to do with her, but we needed a clue. Paranoid ranting. I've learned that my life is not my own. I will not allow you to have my life. You will have to pull my life from my broken body if you want it. It's you who will die. If I cannot have it, neither you will. Neither will you. You are responsible for this tre tre treason of flesh. You will not live to live my life. Accursed tattoos. The accursed tattoos will not leave my skin. I have tried to burn them off of my skin. Failed, failed. I try and cloak myself, but I always feel that people are reading my flesh. Reading me like a book. Whenever they look at me, I want to tear their eyes out, pluck them from their sockets and crush them beneath my, beneath my heel. Ravel? I used the goblet of Samir to force a waking dream. I saw a hag. She tempted me, threatened me with the shadows. I have never seen her, but she came when I dreamt. I must not dream again. I must always be aware. I destroyed the goblet. She says she's someone of power and she will have me. Will find me. Get away, hag. Stay far from me. Leave me in peace. I want nothing to do with you. Her voice reeked of evil's talons, talons like spiders, they burrowed into my grey matter and I needed her out of my mind, out, out hug. She was a myth, a fairy tale, who alone challenged the Lady of Pain. How can one fight someone who is a myth? I don't have the weapons, I need weapons that will kill her should she find me. I need a strategy so she cannot defeat me when she comes for me. I must devise and think, I shall beat her. Danger of names. Fear names. Names have power in identity. Names can be used as weapons by others. They are a hook that can be used to track you, find you, hunt, hunt you across the plains. Remain nameless and you shall be safe. I agree with that. Killing in the festival. I went to the festival looking for the path of my false self in its holes. So glaring was it that those I did not know, the false ones, welcomed me into their com confidence, treated me as a friend. He, so he's referring a false self. Showed me my room, attended to my needs. I had to restrain myself from launching out against them. That would have been premature. First, I needed to protect my identity. I found one who knew the exclusive language of the Uyu, learned it as I could, then killed him. Then I went to the sensorium and prepared to end the matter soon, soon. Okay, so this is probably the same person, the same previous nameless one that we found stuck in the sensory stone, in this trap that he had created. Maybe. The murder of one who tried to help you. There is nothing he can do. Memories are gone. He says never to return. He says lies and tell me, tells me this is what he told me. <laughs> lies. He says my mind is weakening from every death. Lies. He sat there, betraying my confidence with every turn. He says that only after three more deaths, three more lives, will I gain the benefit of keeping my memories, but that I, myself, I will die when I die. Die? How can one be immortal and still die? Well, by not having your memories. It's very simple. He could not answer, so he was of no use. I butchered him so that no other incarnation will ever benefit from his uselessness. But who is this person? This is not the Uyu guy. 
because um, every every single one of us uh, could be reset. If if every anybody of us could be reset, we would be a completely different person every time. <laughs> to keep being yourself, you would have to be able to remember who you are. And still, even if you find your memory, you're still somebody that is different because there is. You either you basically you you have to stop resetting, so you have to stop dying. Technically, you should live forever, but without dying. That that's the trick. I think we are done. A cryptic answer from an unknown source. So the ghastly heads said. You have been divided. You are one of many men. One in many men? You bear many names. Each has left their scars on your left. On your flesh, sorry. Who wrote this? Lost one, immortal one, incarnations end, men of a thousand deaths, the one doomed to life. Restless one, one of many. The one whom life holds prisoner, the bringer of shadows, the wounded one, misery bringer, Yemeth. Wait a second. Yemeth? You are silvered glass that has cracked and the pieces scattered across history. Only one piece is of import. Regain that and your life will be yours again. There will be a price. This price will buy you a chance. Without the chance you are doomed. You have lost that which is never meant to be separated from man. My nature? You mean that? Your mortality has been stripped uh, from you, lost. It exists, but you must find it before your mind is lost to you as well. Yeah, I don't... Uh, this is not how immortality works. Um, depends, again, because you cannot be immortal if you're a different person every time. Um, doesn't work like that. Okay, so this was interesting, and we, we can access this whenever we want, right? Okay. Hello. This is the guy with the mug. You can't... <laughs> yeah, this guy. Ah, this guy has a problem with drinking. I remember his mug. Why don't you stop drinking then? What? I remember having this dialogue with him, but not this. There is someone you should speak to, unfulfilled desire. You can find her in the Civic Festival. Talk to her if you... of your love for drink. You'll soon find you won't want it any longer. Updated my journal. Really? His eyes brighten. Truly, I shall go speak to her now then. I thank you, sir. He pauses, looking down at his empty mug. Here, I would uh, have you take this. I need it no longer. He hands you the rune-covered L stain. <laughs> well, I don't need it anymore now. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do it, because I don't know. <laughs> Let's use this scroll now, shall we? This is an old fading innocuous looking parchment scrolls bound with a single red ribbon and smelling faintly of mild dew. The ribbon is held in place with a plain wax, wax seal. Let's open it. Updated my journal. This scroll contains a few lines of shaky calligraphy and a strange rune. The calligraphy reads, This may not kill you, but it will slow you down, I'm sure. Stop chasing me, you thieving bastard. It's my body. <laughs> mine. <laughs> mine, mine. Now die. What? 
The rune suddenly drops and the entire scroll begins to dissolve into a stinking black mass. The fluid seeps directly into the flesh of your hands. In seconds, the magical hemotoxin begins to render your blood into black bile. For a moment, you clutch at yourself, howling in agony, and then the pain subsides. You have survived whatever horrible magic was placed upon the scroll. This, is, this must be from the same guy, that paranoid guy that uh, wrote the dodecahedron. <laughs> I w I'm fine, I can... Can I stop you? Maybe I should turn off your eye, maybe. So... What what was that about? <laughs> stop chasing me, you thieving bastards. Uh, it's my body, my mind. <laughs> this is getting very, very weird. I'm not complaining. <laughs> Can I, I? I want to see if um, Morte was mentioning that they could teach something to him. I want. How do I trigger that? Uh, can you tell me about yourself? I've already. Read this? Maybe. I am chained to this anchor of a pawn shop with a husband who doesn't appreci appreciate me enough. I could I not appreciate the mouth and figure of a creature as beautiful as this, truly, without discernment and taste I am. Yeah, they are bickering. Something I thought marriage could cure and which hope was entirely in vain. Ah. More? Can I, I? I will try this to exhaustion. Factions? Factions? The factions? Ha! All they have done is tax this poor shop in order to death, driven us to the hive wars, and make Broca even less of a man than he already is. You shut your mouth, I am more a man than you'll ever be. Well, of course, she's a woman. <laughs> he pauses, reconsiders his words, and eyes his wife critically. Perhaps not, to be sure. You have more a, of a mustache than most men I've ever seen. Huh. Lucky girl. She splatters incoherently for a moment and then launches into a tirade uh, that blisters your ears and soon Broca is shouting just as loudly. They ignore you. More? about the area I've already done that well let's talk to her maybe I don't think I've heard this he's broker my husband of 20 some years. Though his inconstant nature makes it hard to believe he has not strayed in that time. Certainly does make it hard to believe all those chances thrown away when I could have been having the time of my life. To be sure, the goats on the farm must miss your tender mi ministration. <laughs> Broca purples, and the two of them fall into what sounds like the latest in a long, long series of arguments. They at their attentions are entirely devoted to each other. Well, at least they are devoted to each other. What about you? I shall talk with you then. The dead one has returned. Who's she? She? She's my devoted wife some two score years and the light of my life and the greatest the greatest gift ever to enter his life isn't that right i saved him you see from the life his parents had planned for him and he promised to take me away from all this and instead instead what you see is the life he gave me i tell you it would be enough to drive a body to drink if she weren't already there she's the biggest bubber this side of the hive, sir, and she's been that way for years, I tell you, years. She'd drink the river Oceanus and still be thirsty if it were made of alcohol. 
Well, I, I think... I think we have a... Tell me about yourself. Me? You want to know about me? Mika, he wants to know about me? He's just being polite. He doesn't really care. You have nothing useful to say anyway. You're the owner of a pawn shop and that's all you ever be because you lack ambition. I lack ambition? I lack ambition if I didn't have a lodestone of this wife. And this life had be something, but no, instead I'm a shop storekeeper instead of a grand adventurer. The two of them degenerate into a shouting match. Ah, you want to know about the area? I can tell you many things about the area. There are many sides to see. Mika breaks scene, and the first thing you'll mention will be the ladies' place, no doubt. The ladies' place for you, for you men. It's not only for men, actually. It's always the ladies' place or the civic festival, never the market. Or I was going to tell him about the market, but now I'm going to tell him about the establishment just to spite you, and then I'll tell him about the civic festival, and never will I mention any of the other attractions. <laughs> They're busy sh sh shouting at each other. Factions. Do you know about the factions? I have ears, I can hear what he says. Broca has no track with the factions because they know he can't hold it to a belief long enough to believe it in to believe it himself. I know one thing I believe. I believe that this life must be my punishment for something I did in a past life. I'm gone. What, what was about you? Ali, could you train me in what? I don't know, I have the I have had enough of teaching petty pickpockets and curious sensates for the time being, almost to himself. He mumbles, not sure why I agreed to do it in the first place. This one can convert you into a thief? Perhaps because by teaching others you make them aware of your own skill? Mm. At the same time you defend the nobility of your skills by assuring them that you're not common thief, but a scout and a spy, a master of subterfuge. Ellie nods, mulling over what you've said, aye, there's no denying it. It's sort of sorry, though, when you look at it that way. Why? I don't think so. Those of your trade are often misunderstood, trust unfairly into the same category as footpaths and brigands. There's nothing wrong with dispelling false notions. Uh, right again, you are. He gives you a friendly punch to your shoulder. Thanks, Blood. He suddenly looks off into the distance. Well, enough wasting time out here. I'm heading back to the festival. If you still want to train, that's where you'll find me. What? Okay, I apparently did something. What was this about? Maybe because my charisma is uh, my charisma, my intelligence and stuff is now higher. Maybe I can. I don't know. What have I done? Oh, she was here, right? I think. Oh yeah, here she is. Uh, hey, and now I need your help. Um. Mm, can you dig into my body, please? <laughs> I'm not going to watch this, says Morte. Uh, where? Where? Stomach? Intestines? Yes, please. Check my intestines. You lie upon the table and Marta stands over you, a rusty knife at the ready. There is stabbing pain as she slices into your abdomen, then cuts brutally downwards in a saw-like motion, exposing your innards. Despite the pain, you watch in silent, morbid fascination as she plunders your organs, humming to herself. 
Ah, there is a wrenching pain as Marta lifts up the ropey mass of your intestines, blood and other fluids streaming from it. Look at this, Marta. Look at this. I see, I see. Cut there. Cut there. Marta makes a small deft incision in the side of one of the intestines and you hear a thing as something small and metallic strikes the floor. Urk. Updated my journal. What? Marta then dumps the soupy mass back into your torso. You could stitch that hole up, though. Then reaches down, picks up the object. A ring, it appears. And she flicks it to you. Pretty, pretty, eh, Marta? She nods. Yes, Marta. One shouldn't swallow such a thing. No, no. Thanks. Was there anything else? Nothing more. More nothing, eh, Marta? Should we try someplace else? No, not, not now. I want to check what I've got. Twisted ring. This ring looks like three rings that have been wrapped around each other. Just looking at it makes you dizzy. <laughs> intestines. This ropey mass of bloody intestines appears to be yours. You have to admit it makes you uncomfortable to see them outside of your body. Can I put them back into my body? What should I do with this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what should I do with the twisted ring? It's just a ring? Well, that was not helpful then. Maybe somebody else can use that ring. Plus one to armor class. Their character is too far away? Guys, where are we? Oh, you're Done. down there. Done. So, uh, we found a ring. You're there? Hey, stop. We need to speak. What do you wish to speak, my lord? Your death? We're killing him now? Okay, we're Die. killing him. I don't know why. <laughs> Skull pendant? Well, I don't know. I, I have nothing better to do. Pendant of Yamet. Oh, but Yamet was one of the name, one of my names. Constructed of some silvery metal, six crystals radiate from the skull in a circle, forming a crown of sorts. A leather lanyard is looped uh, through, though, though, an eye through an eye hole attached to the top of the skull. The item is named for its creator, a sorcerer of bygone age. Though Yemet's power was great, time began to take its toll on him. He began to grow weak and sodden. The pendant was commissioned by the dying wizard to serve as a vessel for souls. Souls which Yemet himself would draw from dying mortals and later used to power his waning life force. Yemet was eventually slain in a battle, destroyed utterly, and the pendant was lost. Sages said that, even if the pendant were to be recovered, no mortal knows the secrets of its use. Will something happen if I wear it? I don't know where, where, where could I wear it though. I don't think I wear I can wear this. <laughs> okay. Tugs. Who are these tugs? I'm talking with everybody in here again. This young but well muscled tug. Well, certainly well armed and large enough to be dangerous, seems awfully clean for a typical street tough. Mm. He's carrying a massive axe in one hand and a steel box in the other. As you near him, he puffs up and scowls at you. What are you looking at? So, pike off before I've to scrag you. 
Scrag? What in the nine planes of butter are you talking about, you idiot? Scrag snugged, nipped, yanked by the hard heads. You clueless, adult coughed. Berk. He glares daggers at Anna but says nothing. <laughs> you do seem a little well groomed for a thug. Stop shaking your bone box, leatherhead. This is my territory and you'll be leaving it quick if you don't want my bloods to tear you apart. Anna sneakers, shaking her head, rattle you sod. Rattling your bone box it is. I'd so like to see how long you'd last dropped smack in the middle of the hive acting as you are. Anna turns to you, come on, let's be off. No use wasting our time with this wee stemmed basher would be. His face flashes angrily as he gnash gnashes his teeth in frustration. That's it, you've you've piking asked for it. Get him, blood. He raises his axe and leaps to attack. Okay, we fight. Oh, Poor nameless one, he's surrounded. Guys, are you you are not attacking? <laughs> sorry. Right. I'm sorry, nameless one. Um your your own why don't I have ranged weapons? Why there are no ranged weapons in this <sighs> I can't use that. Try one of these. Did she did she do it? What is she? She's there, so maybe it is this one instead. Oh, nameless one. How can I be still alive, though? Done. <laughs> She's following me because she wants to heal me. Thanks. You, um, you did something. I'm here. Well, at least the guys are free now. I'm listening. Let's see if I you can do something fun. This. <laughs> Let's try it. Well, that was late. Terribly late and disappointing. Well, strength. yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm glad that there is not so much combat in this game. <laughs> I'm almost glad. Oh my god. Ooh. So this is a thing. We can sell all this stuff. This one I'm gonna sell. I don't... Nah, you know what? I'm not gonna waste time with that. I'm gone. What's in this steel box? The sturdy steel box has a thick leather handle on the top, but there's no apparent way to open the thing. It appears to be welded shut. There are a number of very narrow slits along one side, though you can't quite see into the box through them. A sickly sweet rotting smell wafts <laughs> out from the slits. Talk to the iron? As you examine the container more closely, it shifts slightly in your hands. Something's moved inside it. There's a man's voice from within. Oh, there is someone there by chance. My name's Mertwin. Anyone? Hell? Yes? 
Thank the powers, have you seen my body perchance? It's hard to miss him, stumbles about with a silly wooden head on its shoulders. Yes, I have. He must have worn his feet down to stabs looking for me by now. Yes. My good fortune, then. Could I persuade you to return me to him, good sir? Yes. I can do that. Updated my journal. Oh, splendid. I thank you kindly, then, sir. If you don't mind now, we'll hold off speaking any further until I'm with my body again. But I had questions. I'm sorry. I'm sure you do, sir. Coming across a severed speaking head locked in an iron case, but it will have to wait. Very tiresome being separated from my body. You see, my humblest apologies. How did... How would I even have known about this? Uh, for your information, I've been running around the game for a couple of hours in separated days just to find out things. Um, because I don't seem to know how to proceed, I still have to visit the Dream Machine again with the, the Dodecahedron. I will try doing that. Because I have no idea what to do. Right. Okay, he's this one, right? There we go. The beheaded man is still lurching about, bumping into walls, pillars and the like. Uh, you must be Mertwin's body, right? Mertwin's voice suddenly echoes from within the steel box. Oh, oh there it is. That's my body. Say there, old chum, over here. The body shuffles towards you, reaching out towards the steel box containing Mertwin's head. Allow Mertwin's body to take his head. My ah, much better. I thank you, good sir. I imagine my body here was getting a bit restless without me. The body hugs the steel box tightly. Yes, I missed you too. The body tucks the case under its arm and bows to you. And as for you, good sir, you certainly deserve some sort of reward for your trouble. Let's see what I've got now. The body fumbles about in his pockets and finding nothing there in its tunic. Finally, it presents you with several hands full of copper coins. Yeah, thanks. How did you end up the way you are? Not sure, really. The body set me down in one of the lecture halls. And the next thing I knew... Someone had absconded with me. The next thing I remember was being picked up by you. But what I meant was how'd you lose your head? The body stiffens visibly. Oh, we don't like to talk about it. Quite horrible, really. What's past is past. No need to dredge it up. Though I will say I'm in the box because my head's not quite as presentable as my body, if you get my meaning. Well, if, if, if your body left a box just right there, why, why won't somebody have picked it up? <laughs> Duh. Do you know anything about Ravel? Ravel can say I recall the woman. Okay, then. I don't think I wanted to know anything else about uh, sensates and stuff, right? I'm not a sensate, mind you, but I just like to watch all the different sorts of people milling about. Oh my god! A legacy, the note read, forget not to collect your legacy, and a small code scratch beside it, 51 AA. A trap, no doubt, set by yet another of my false selves. I'll see it destroyed, I will. Really? No. Maybe, maybe I just didn't see it, but uh, 